There are new complications in the effort to get the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant under control. Nitrogen is being injected into the number three reactor's containment vessel to prevent a hydrogen explosion. But it appears that the nitrogen could be leaking out. Tokyo Electric Power Company has injected more than 200 cubic meters of nitrogen into the containment vessel since Thursday. But it says the pressure inside has hardly changed, so nitrogen could be leaking out from damaged areas. TEPCO is also having problems with a system that decontaminates highly radioactive water. It had to stop the system for nine hours on Friday to release air that was trapped in a pipe. And it says the system is still working more than 20 percent slower than necessary. The nitrogen injection and the water decontamination are vital for the first step of TEPCO's plan to get the plant under control. TEPCO's deadline for completing the nitrogen injection is July 17th. An earthquake with a magnitude of 5.4 shook the Tokyo area tonight. The quake stuck, struck at 9.01 p.m. and registered 5 minus on the Japanese scale of 0 to 7 in the city of Moka in Tochi Prefecture, north of Tokyo. The meteorological agency said the preliminary magnitude was 5.5, but later revised it to 5.4. It also changed the quake focus from 60 to 66 kilometers underground in Ibaraki Prefecture, northeast of Tokyo. There were no immediate reports of damage and no tsunami alert was issued. Japan's government has begun gathering information on the quake at the crisis management center in the prime minister's office in Tokyo. The operator of the crippled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant is aiming to bring the plant under control by injecting nitrogen into its number three reactor containment vessel. But there is a long road ahead due to a problematic wastewater system. The Tokyo Electric Power Company, or TEPCO, uh, started the injection on Thursday evening to prevent a hydrogen explosion. The utility had already begun the procedure at the plant's number one and two reactors, but the work at the number three reactor was delayed due to high radiation levels. Adding to concerns is the French-made device installed to recycle radioactive wastewater. It continues to work below its target capacity. The circulating cooling system is meant to decontaminate radioactive wastewater and send it back into the reactors as coolants. The utility plans to introduce a new developed service as an alternative in August. The operator of the Fukushima nuclear plant has again stopped its wastewater filtering system after discovering it was still operating below capacity. Tokyo Electric Power Company, or TEPCO, halted the system early Friday morning. The device had only restarted the night before after a leak that shut filtering down for 30 hours. TEPCO says that even after the repair, the system is treating just 37 tons of contaminated water an hour more than 20% uh, below target. The utility insists that the halt has caused no rise in the temperature of fuel rods, which are being cooled by previously decontaminated water. The steady operation of the water treatment and recycling system is critical for reactor cooling. Sunday marks the end of phase one in a timetable for bringing the reactors under control. On a different front, TEPCO has began on Thursday night injecting nitrogen into the number three reactor's containment vessel in a bid to prevent another hydrogen explosion. It says the measure has caused no rise in radiation around the facility so far. Radioactive cesium far exceeding safe limits has been detected in hay fed to cattle at another farm near the damaged Fukushima power plant. Hay with a high level of radioactive cesium was fed to cattle at the farm in Asakawa. 42 of them were sent to meat processing plants. The finding came during inspections ordered by the prefecture after a large dose of the radioactive substance was found in hay at the first farm in Minamisoma City. The latest checks uncovered up to 97,000 becquerels of radioactive cesium per kilogram, some 73 times the official safety limit. The 42 cattle were sent to four meat processing plants between April 8th and July 6th. 14 went to Yokohama, six, uh, 13 rather to Tokyo, 10 to Sendai, and 5 to Chiba.
The prefecture has ordered the farm to stop shipping and transporting cattle. It has also provided detailed information to the relevant municipalities, asking them to trace the distribution channels of the beef from the cattle. Fukushima Prefecture says the hay was collected in Shirakawa, a city about 80 kilometers southwest of the crippled nuclear power plant. The hay had been left outdoors for at least four days after the March 11th disaster. A farm in Asakawa town next to Shirakawa bought the hay in early April and used it for cattle feed. Japanese Health Minister Ritsuo Hosokawa says he may expand radiation tests on cattle to include animals raised outside Fukushima's evacuation zones. Hosokawa spoke on Friday after it was learned that hay kept by a farmer in Asakawa town in the prefecture was found to contain high levels of radioactive cesium. We will thoroughly trace the sales and distribution of contaminated meat and will consider testing all cattle from Fukushima Prefecture. Asakawa town is outside the government designated evacuation zones. Tests on the hay revealed that it contained up to 97,000 becquerels of cesium per kilogram. That's 73 times the government set safety limit. The farmer said he has already shipped 42 head of cattle that they ate the hay to meat processing plants in, in Tokyo and three other uh, cities. Prefectural authorities have already decided to test all cattle within the evacuation zones. Japan's nuclear agency says it has drawn up methods for stress testing the country's nuclear power plants. But the announced plan does not include a timetable for checking facilities that are already idle for routine inspections. The Nuclear Industrial Safety Agency says it will apply two stages of tests involving computer simulations to gauge the reactor's resistance to dangerous situations caused by earthquakes, tsunami, loss of power, and loss of cooling capacity. The first stage tests will apply only to reactors halted for regular checkups. The secondary test will be applied to all reactors and will involve simulations that include various combinations of the four types of the trouble, like an earthquake and tsunami. The agency says it will ask utilities to report the results of the secondary test by the end of this year, but does not mention a deadline for the primary test. This leaves the schedule for resuming halted reactors unclear. A nuclear agency official says the agency's only role will be to check whether the tests are conducted properly. The minister in charge of the nuclear crisis, Goshi Hosono, says politicians should not meddle in the work of the agency and that of the other watchdog body, the Nuclear Safety Commission. Hosono said the government will decide on dates to restart the reactors when results of the primary tests are available. Japan's nuclear crisis minister says chances are slim that any more nuclear power plants will be built in the country. The scale of the ongoing crises at the Fukushima Daiichi plant makes it extremely difficult for Japan to build new nuclear power plants. Hosono defended a proposal by Prime Minister Naoto Kan earlier this week to reduce Japan's dependence on nuclear energy. The minister said it's a choice based on reality, not theory. Hosono stressed the need to press forward with a bill to promote the use of renewable energy. The DAI began deliberations on the legislation Thursday. Japanese electronics maker Hitachi was given preferential negotiation rights on Thursday over building a nuclear power plant in Lithuania. The Baltic country has been facing a power shortage since 2009. This was when a nuclear facility with a similar design to the Chernobyl reactor was closed. The country plans to build a new facility sometime after 2020. Japan's Hitachi and Toshiba, each teaming up separately with their U.S. partners, have been bidding for the contract. Hitachi and General Electric of the U.S made a proposal to build the latest model nuclear reactor. The Japanese firm says it will further improve safety features such as securing an alternative power source. Hitachi hopes to seal a formal contract with this five billion dollar project with the Lithuanian government by the end of this year. Well, Prime Minister Naoto Kan says a policy he announced Wednesday to reduce Japan's dependence on nuclear energy 
is his own and not an official government plan. Khan told his cabinet on Friday that he laid out the policy to express his own views in the wake of the Fukushima nuclear accident. He said he wants to eventually implement a policy focused on renewable energy. Cabinet members were divided on the matter. The cabinet hadn't heard of Khan's views until the announcement. Khan should spell out his intentions to the cabinet so the ministers can explain them to the public. I don't oppose Khan's idea, but he should have done more before making the announcement. Earnest political discussions should be held after the Prime Minister lays out his views. And people should not just accuse him of trying to cling to his post. Many Japanese are increasingly doubtful about the future of nuclear energy. I think Prime Minister Khan's announcement was aimed at starting national debate on the issue. A lower house plenary session on Thursday began deliberating on a bill to compel power companies to purchase solar, wind and other forms of renewable energy from the next fiscal year. The Japanese government is considering prices and time frames for utilities to purchase the energy. The companies would buy solar power from private residences at about 45 cents per kilowatt range and other natural energies at 25 cent level. The government is also considering a compulsory purchasing period of 10 years for residential solar power and around 15 years for other natural energy sources. Renewable energy is more expensive than thermal and nuclear power, so the bill is aimed at making it profitable. One of the most active volcanoes in Indonesia has erupted, forcing thousands of residents to evacuate. On Thursday evening, Mount Lokan on the Indonesian island of Sulawesi spewed a plume of ash and smoke 1,500 meters into the air. That was followed by at least two more major eruptions. Fires spread after lava set trees and grass ablaze, but they have now reportedly been brought under control. About 6,000 residents are taking refuge in schools and other temporary shelters. There are no reports of injuries. But local disaster authorities warned of another possible eruption and have called on around 27,000 residents within 3.5 kilometers of the volcano to evacuate.